Conquest is back in the house at the time of this recording, ladies and gentlemen, and it occurred to me that I haven't actually put out a video giving a general basics how-to on what is Conquest and how do you best maximize your rewards. This isn't a video guide on how to get red box in this version of Conquest. I have a full playlist for that. If you're looking for Queen Armadala guides, go elsewhere. This one, we're just talking about everything Conquest. A beginner's guide, if you will. We'll start with the very basics then. Conquest comes in three different difficulties when you first unlock it. An easy mode, a normal mode, and a hard mode. Within those different difficulties comes different energy types for each battle, and a different number of feats that you need to complete if you want to maximize the rewards. If you want to unlock hard mode, you must get to the end and beat the sector boss of sector 5, of normal mode of conquest. Once you've done that and you've breached 4 million GP, there is a GP requirement, you will be able to access hard mode, which has the best rewards. Now, just a pro tip for you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are able to hit tier one, the very first reward box in conquest hard mode, you are better off doing hard mode than you are normal mode unless your aim is to just farm data disks. If you're not interested in the Conquest character, you can farm data disks at a higher efficiency rate on normal because the energy per battle is lower on the normal difficulty. I don't, however, advise this. I always recommend people try to red box or progress as far as they can within Conquest to unlock those all important Conquest characters. You know, the ones I'm talking about. I'm talking about your Commander Ahsoka Tano's, your Darth Bane's, your Dad Bod Boba Fett's, the real cream of the crop, you know? So, with difficulties aside, let's talk about rewards then. What's the point of doing Conquest? The point of Conquest is twofold, mainly. One is Conquest is a game mode that introduces the most powerful characters outside of Legendaries and galactic legends now i will put a little asterisk next to that because some of the characters we've received from conquest some of the fleets some of the individual units that we get have been more powerful than any legendary look at darth bane he is absolutely destroying galactic legends at the moment and he was only available through conquest Okay, so first of all, we're doing it for the Conquest characters. Second of all, it is the most important and easiest way of farming Datacrons. And I know Datacrons are a bit of a contentious topic here, but for those of you that really wish to engage in and excel at PvP game modes, Datacrons are a requirement. If you want to climb through Kyber 1 in GAC, you need Datacrons. If you want to climb up to higher leagues, get into Kyber in the first place, and you've got a smaller roster, Datacrons. It helps. It's the real way to improve your roster outside of things like modding and unlocking legendaries. Massively, massively important. So how do we actually earn characters? How do we get those unlocks? Well, Conquest has a reward track, okay? This is a reward track and you'll see it is split in two halves here. The top half up here is what's known as the premium pass. You'll see that there is a uh, conquest pass that you're able to buy. This is like a battle pass that you might see in other games such as Apex Legends or Fortnite or that sort of business. Even things like Rocket League I think have got battle passes these days. So this top one here is a premium only thing. In order to unlock that you have to click the little upgrade path. You can see here I've got pass plus. We'll get onto that in a second. But the standard pass is $9.99 or $10. It will vary depending on your region. And then the Conquest Pass Plus gives you a little bit of a few extras on top of that for a total of $30. Now, this is for two weeks worth of content. OK, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you if this is valuable. OK, in my opinion, for someone of my means, the standard pass is an incredibly valuable investment because it gives a lot in return. You do not need it to unlock the character at the quickest pace, but it does help and it frees up your currency elsewhere. If you simply do not have the disposable income or don't want to invest money in the game and you are hardcore free to play, don't worry, you can get everything you need out of Conquest without buying the pass and certainly without buying the pass plus. So before we continue down the differences here, let's actually just talk about the pass plus. What does the pass plus offer you that the standard pass does not? It's a couple of things. 
Firstly, you'll notice there are additional rewards. Now, these are given to you as soon as you purchase the Pass Plus. You get a couple of very powerful data disks. We'll talk about data disks in a moment in more depth, but essentially data disks are a way of modifying your stats and your abilities to your team as you do these battles, and they cost a certain amount. So you get two very powerful ones, and these vary based on the conquest. They often update these, not between each set of any particular character, which is every three months, um, but, you know, sometimes every other. You also get a number of consumables to help you along your way. We'll also talk about consumables in just a moment. That helps you. You also get a bunch of different consumables here, which give incredibly powerful short-term abilities to your account. And you get a little bit of Chirotech. I mean, the Chirotech in itself is probably worth, I think you can get a recurring weekly pack of this for about $5. So that gives you sort of a ballpark figure for how much each of these things are worth. But it's not just that. In the Pass Plus, obviously you get the standard premium reward track, but you also get enhanced conquest energy refresh rates as well as stamina regeneration, and we'll get onto that in just a moment as well. The final benefit of the Pass Plus is that you get to swap your data disks without having to pay energy for them. More on that in just a moment. Okay, so we have a standard and we have a premium reward track. How do we actually progress along this reward track. There's a number of ways. There's a number of ways, but chiefly, the chief two that you're looking at is feats through conquest, and there are global feats, sector feats, and boss feats, and also just winning battles. Now, much like how you progress in normal light side and dark side energy battles, you'll notice that you can get one to three stars on those, and those translate into stars on the base holotables. tables. You see, oh, I've got 600 stars on light side battles. The same sort of principle translates to this. Each star that you earn in a battle counts for one of these data disk keys, or data keys, I think they're called. In order to progress, you obviously need to win on the battles, try to three star every single node, and complete the feats. Feats are worth different amounts. You can earn up to three keys for getting a three star on a battle node, all the way up to a maximum reward track of 630. The only way you are going to be hitting 630 is if you complete the majority of the feats and you get the majority of your battles three stars. Okay, you can usually drop about 35 keys in any given conquest and still hit the red box. Okay, and what's in the red box? Well, this is the most important thing. In this instance, we're on the Queen Armadala conquest. In, if we hit the red box, we will earn 90 shards of Queen Armadala. You can also earn additional shards of, from her as you progress through the conquest nodes from the Wandering Scavengers. We'll talk about that in just a minute, as well as through the premium reward track, which offers you the current conquest unit. You get 20 shards through here. You also earn 20 of the previous conquest character as well. You can see we've got Darth Bane over here. So the Pass Plus offers that. If you've already unlocked it and seven stars it, you do get the shards. They just convert then into uh, shard shop currency if you've already unlocked, okay? You'll also notice that the red reward crate also gives you additional previous character rewards. You do get a few other things like some signal data along the way and some relic materials and you get some random chests here which can give you bits of gear. But honestly, the lion's share of the rewards are what you're looking for is the conquest unit. So in order to fully unlock a brand new conquest unit in the quickest amount of time, you have to go into conquest, hit that red box three times, and either have the premium reward track or purchase the actual conquest character from wandering scavenger notes which we will talk about we talked about feats and getting those keys and how do you go about doing it let's talk about the different types of feats if you head over here you've got what's known as event feats i like to call them global feats and this is going to be a number of challenges that you are asked to complete over the period of the conquest event which is two weeks and you have to try and hit the requirements. You can see over here, defeat 250 enemies on the golden challenge path. We'll talk about the challenge path in a moment. Or win 40 battles with a full squad of Galactic Republic. You'll see I'm currently on 18 out of 40. And you'll see over here that you've got conquest key cards. These are what progress you down that reward path. So once I finish off this, I'll get 15 key cards towards my total rewards. You can use this to plan out your conquest to see how far you can progress or even which feats you can afford to drop. Like I said, you can usually drop about 35 key cards in the entirety of conquest and still hit that red box. 
You can also get other consumables from these feats, and this is how sort of CG will gate particular feats. So for Mandalore over here, you need to win 20 battles with a full light side squad of Mandalorians. That gives you this consumable over prepared one, which as you use it, you'll gain bonuses to your stats essentially. But there is another feat, as you can see down here, which requires you to use the over prepared one consumable. So in order to do this feat, you need to beat this feat. It's a way of locking it. Now, often those feats that require consumables will be uh, will require consumables that are given to you through the Conquest Pass Plus. So that Pass Plus does give you a little bit of an edge at completing the Conquest Path, okay? It's something to consider. So apart from event feats or global feats, there are two other types of feats that we have within Conquest. Each individual sector, of which there are five, they are going to be what's known as sector feats, okay? So down here in the bottom left corner, we've got feats for sector one, and each sector will have four sector feats that you have to complete. For example, inflict armor shred 30 times across, the, across all of the battles. You don't even have to win those battles. Just go in, armor shred, if you lose, still counts, right? Same thing for gain secret intel, that's a buff from BB-8, for example. Go in, you use BB-8, you get them to wiggle around, whip, 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 just like that, and you'll work your way towards secret intel. And you'll see on the right hand side, you'll be earning yourself some conquest key cards. Now, as the sectors progress, these feats usually become a little bit more difficult, but they also reward more data keys, okay? So those key cards become uh, like sort of top end stack. The further you progress inside of conquest to the later sectors, the better off your average rewards will be. So apart from the sector feats, you will also have boss feats, okay? So each sector has got a mid-sector boss and an end-sector boss. Each of those bosses, whilst you can still get three stars on each node, also have two individual feats that you need to complete. You can see here we've got the greatest teacher, Failure Is. Win with Hermit Yoda surviving gives you two data keys. Hokey Religions, win without using Jedi, Sith, or unaligned Force users gives you two data keys. What you might notice there is that it is impossible for you to gain these two feats at the same time. Hermit Yoda is a Jedi, so it forbids you from unlocking that Hokey Religions feat. And you'll notice that happens more often than not on these boss nodes. You just simply cannot hit both feats at once. What does that mean? That means you need to do this battle at least twice. All right. You'll notice that each individual battle costs 20 of our conquest energy, which is this one up here. This conquest energy is only active during conquest. You won't even see it otherwise. When you start a fresh conquest, it'll always be full and you can preload that conquest energy at the end of the previous session. I only really recommend doing that when we're going into a new season of conquest. Every three conquests, we get a new conquest character. That'll be a new season, new feats. Okay, so the only time I recommend preloading your energy is when we're going into a new season. Now you can refresh your conquest energy a number of times. The first three, I can count, the first three will cost 50 crystals per piece, and then it'll be another three at 100, and then it's two at 200 and two at 400 or something like that. I recommend at a bare minimum, doing at least the 50 crystal refreshes. It's impossible to actually finish conquest and red box conquest without at least two refreshes of your conquest energy. But realistically, I recommend people do six. And I know that's expensive. I know it's expensive to dedicate 400 crystals every single day for two weeks to do conquest. But if you really want to be able to farm a lot of datacrons and progress in PvP game modes, which have good rewards, you need to be farming a lot of datacrons and that requires a lot of energy. The faster you finish conquest, the faster you red box, the faster you'll be able to farm additional datacron materials to enhance the number of datacrons in your account and profit. However, if you can't afford to do that much, I recommend at least doing three refreshes, 150 crystals a day during conquest, okay? Yes, it is worthwhile tailoring back the amount of crystal refreshes you do elsewhere in the game. Maybe you take off one of your cantina energy refreshes. That's 100 crystals saved. Maybe you don't refresh regular energy during conquest. That gives you an extra 150. Maybe you only do one refresh on mods instead of three. You know, there are ways to do about it, and it's going to differ based on how well you perform generally in 
Conquest, well, how well you perform in Conquest, how well you perform in Fleet Arena, how well you perform in GAC currently, and how well your guild performs in other game modes. Definitely try to get at least the 350s though. I recommend six. So as we were saying, those appear on the mid sector boss and the end sector boss, and those feats are going to be differing each season of Conquest. All right, all of the bosses will also differ each season of Conquest. The individual nodes that you face along here, there are 20 per sector. Essentially, each sector of Conquest have got 22 battles, two of which are bosses. So you've got the mid sector, the end sector. 20 of them are standard fights, and these can be along branching paths. We'll talk about that in just one minute. We also get a number of nodes that are dedicated to data disks, these data disk stockpiles, and wandering scavenger nodes. So let's talk about that real, real quick. So we're at the end of Sector 2 right now at the time of this recording. I need to do Cad Bane with Aura Singh surviving and also Hokey Religions. So no Jedi, no Sith, no online force users, but also Cad Bane and Aura Singh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this and I'm going to fulfill the requirements and uh, complete all those feats just so you can see what Sector 3 looks like. So I'm going to take in Hut Cartel here. Yeah, we, we need Cad Bane and we need Aura Singh. I'm taking in Hut Cartel because there's no online force users, no Jedi, no Sith, etc, etc. Okay, we're going to get this done. You'll see those feats pop up as rewards and we'll see what Sector 3 looks like at a base value. Just Padme to turn into Sadme right now, and we will be absolutely golden. So let's just get rid of Padders. Yeet, yeet, skeet, delete. There we go. That gives us the round. We didn't lose any units, so we got three stars, which is three data keys. And then, boom, we get some additional rewards here, which is conquest credits. We'll show, we'll talk about that in a moment. And two feats were rewarded. At the end of those battles, if you happen to have beat sector feats or global feats, those will also pop up at the end of those battles, so you can always keep track of what's going on. So we've unlocked Sector 3. This is what a sector looks like when you first go into it. It'll give you a quick run through. Look, there's the boss, there's the mid sector boss, and here are our combats, okay? Your sector will always start off with one of these data disk stockpiles, which will give you a random chance at some pretty awesome data disks. I'm taking quickening. You know I'm taking quickening. We'll talk about data disks in a moment. But you will be greeted to a branching path here. You'll see that these ones down here, these sort of light blue ones, are twice as common as the gold path. What is the difference? Well, the difference is the gold path is known as the challenge path. The enemies here have gotten a an additional modifier called the challenge path, which gradually increases the difficulty as you progress through each sector and as you go along the individual sector nodes. Essentially, they're harder to beat, all right? Not only that, but going along the challenge path actually gives you the opportunity at coming across additional data disk stockpiles. Note, this doesn't actually give you any more data disks as you progress, you get a total of five, but it gives you additional options because each of these data disk stockpiles, like you can see over here, will give you three randomized data disks. So if you go along this gold path, it's the only way to get access to this top data disk stockpile over here, which gives you more options for better data disks. So if we compare that to my sector one, which I've completed, you'll notice that I can't see those branching paths anymore. That's because once you go on a path, you are locked into it. You can't go back then and go on the normal path. You have to commit to the path that you are winning along. If you can beat that node, you can progress further. If you can't, then good luck. You just have to keep on fighting. Okay, so I always recommend people go along the challenge path mostly because it gives you additional options at data disks, but also because there's always a feat where you have to beat 20, 250 enemies on conquest challenge path. Okay. But that's the only real difference between it. Let's spend a moment now and think about what are data disks. All right. So data disks, you earn them from these data disk stockpiles and they have various modifiers for your stats and sometimes give you additional abilities, not usable abilities, sort of more like passive abilities or unique abilities to your characters. You can view all of your data disks within your inventory. You'll see this rather terrible UI for data disks. This is your inventory on the right hand side, and these are your equipped data disks. Now, there is a total capacity that you can have of data disks, and that is 12. And there are a number of data disks with a different number of cost, should we call them. 
you'll see we've got these little dots at the bottom. That indicates how much of the capacity that is taken up when you equip it. So for example, if I was to click this data disk here, which is a quickening data disk, fantastic data disk, by the way, it's a one dot. So you see I'm now 13 out of 12. I can't equip it because I'm over capacity, right? These data disks come from one dot to four dot, but that's not the only difference. There's also different rarities. So for example, we've got two data disks here that are both quickening data disks. One of them is a common rarity and the other one is a rare rarity. Okay. You'll notice the difference here is the stat gains. We gain better stats usually from rarer data disks. Now the odds of getting them are completely random, but typically you'll find the further you progress within conquest, the better the data disk will be. Now these rarities can go from common to rare to Oh, or common to uncommon to rare to epic. Now, I don't think I've got any epic ones this time around, um, but typically speaking, most data disks can have something in, somewhere along that range, but not all of them. Some things only appear in epic. Some things only appear in common. Some things only appear from at least uncommon or rare. It just, it's all luck of the draw. And it's okay. Data disks are actually probably the most fun part of Conquest. And I'm not going to go into what are all the different data disks. I'll give links down below to that will tell you what data disks exist within this version of Conquest. And you can peruse that at your will. And I've already done guides on what are the best data disks to equip. That's not the purpose of this video. We also have consumables. Now, consumables are one battle long, and there are three different types. There are boosters, there are med packs, and there are techs. And we've got one of each currently. If we click on this over here, hard clicking on it, you'll see that this consumable gives us 40% additional evasion and 20 speed. They only ever last one battle long. So if I was to equip that, I would have that benefit for one battle. Note that this battle only counts if you win. If you go in with a consumable and you lose that battle, that consumable is not used up. It will still be there for the next battle. You cannot unequip it once it has been equipped. Once it's equipped, it's on there. You have to use it. Okay. But this means that we can reuse these consumables. For example, I've got initial frenzy tech over here. It's a really good tech piece to have. At the start of battle, all allied units gain frenzy for two turns. That can be really useful in getting certain feats done that require you to use buffs or just even get the ball rolling. So if I want to with a really low team and the feat requires me to win with Ewoks or something, and I can somehow get a bonus turn at the start by using Wat Tembo, with this Frenzy tech, I might be able to um, get kills with Ewoks or something like that that I need to do. If I then deliberately fail the mission by letting it time out, this consumable will not be used and I'll be able to reuse it again and again and again. Okay. It's not the most efficient use of your energy, but sometimes it's a very efficient use of certain consumables and can really help you with feats. So keep that in mind. So how do we earn data disks? During each sector, there are five opportunities for you to earn data disks through these data disk stockpiles. There's always one at the start. There's one just between the start and the first boss. There's one right after the boss. There's one between the boss and the final boss. And there's one right after the end sector boss. Each one of these data disk stockpiles will give you a choice of three data disks, which can be any rarity, any cost, and you can get duplicates of them. The best way to make sure you've got the best choice of data disks is to always follow that conquest, that golden path, that challenge path to give you an additional opportunity for choice in your data disks. It doesn't give you more total data disks, it just gives you more choice, more chances at good RNG, basically. So you have to try and maximize that. What about consumables then? Similarly, to the data disks, we also have these wandering scavenger nodes. This is where we can, if we choose, to use our conquest currency on consumables. Now, these consumables can be those different, you know, those boosters. They can be those med packs. They can be those techs. They can also be stim packs, which we are going to get into in a moment. This is quite a broad subject. It restores stamina. Or alternatively, after the mid-sector boss, you also are able to use your conquest currency on unlocking conquest characters. Now, from sector one, the first scavenger node here will give you previous characters, but it'll also give you stuff like signal data and some additional relic data, uh, well, relic materials and gear 12 plus, plus pieces. These are different. They change as you go further on in sectors. I believe it's from sector two 
you'll start being able to earn the conquest character rewards from the mid sector wandering scavenger so let's just go and check that real quick over here you'll see queen armadala is purchasable so real quick i just noticed when i was editing this that i'm missing out some vital piece of information here as you progress through conquest beating each node for the first time will give you the conquest credits that you need in order to spend on getting the conquest unit now these get rewarded for the first time you beat each node as well as the first time you beat the boss node so as I said before, there are 22 battles per sector and there are five sectors in total. So if we do the math on that real quick, 22 battles times five is 110 battles across the entirety of Conquest. You get 20 Conquest credits per battle. So we're gaining 2,200 Conquest credits across the entirety of Conquest. So the maximum number of shards that we can purchase of the current Conquest unit is 20. And they come in stacks of five, as we saw within the video just there. The cost of each one is 525. So if we divide that 2,200 uh, by 525, it means we can purchase it four times, which is the 20 shards, right? So 525 times uh, four times, that's the all of the uh, conquest units that we need to get, is 2,100 currency. So given that only you only get 2,200 from the battles, that only leaves 100 conquest credits left over each conquest if you are beating every single node. Note the bonus nodes do not give you any additional conquest credits. Now you will notice that the only other place that you can earn additional conquest credits is from the reward track. You can see it here, as you progress through this, you gain additional conquest credits. That's going to vary depending on how far you progress. You can see it goes from 40 45 here to 50 here to 50 here 55 55 as you can see you so you do get a little bit of extra wiggle room and you can use that on buying stuff like maybe you need some stamina recovery boosters maybe you want to get yourself an initial frenzy tech that sort of thing as long as you are able to fully progress you just need to make sure that you put aside at least 2100 of your conquest credits in order to buy the conquest character if you are not buying the conquest pass if you are buying the conquest pass you don't need to worry because you should not be buying the character through there unless you don't plan on red boxing okay you're able to get all the shards that you need through the passes premium reward track now if you are not buying the conquest pass you will need to dedicate your resources your conquest currency to purchasing the conquest unit now, I'd always recommend only buying the one for this particular version of Conquest. So right now we're on Queen Armadala. Only purchase the Queen Armadala ones unless you really, really need to catch up on previous Conquest characters, okay? Because if you don't purchase the most recent one and you're not buying the pass, you will not unlock this character in three Conquests where she's around in that season. It'll take you further, all right? If you are buying the pass and you need to catch up on previous ones, then sure, use your Conquest currency here. If you are also buying the path and you've already got previous conquest units, definitely look to buy stuff like signal data. Maybe even consider buying some of the um, various other signal gear pieces that you might require. There's lots of good stuff to buy from Wandering Scavenger Nodes. There is one other different one, and we'll have to go to Sector 3 just to show you it. And that is there's an option of an additional Wandering Scavenger Node at the end, right before the boss. So this node here, this Wandering Scavenger node, offers consumables that replicate the modifiers that you see within Galactic Challenges. Some of the best modifiers in the game, like the Tuscan one, is incredible. Okay, but it's only available here, and it's only available to be purchased with crystals. I do not recommend anybody do this. It's never required. If you just want to have fun and you don't really care about your crystal use, go wild. Otherwise, just focus on the bottom Wandering Scavenger node before each boss. There is one other place, though, that we can buy these consumables if you so choose. That place is the Conquest Shipment Store. You'll see we can get stim packs for stamina. They can buy them either with the Conquest credits or with crystals. You can get the various boosters, and then you can get those modifiers, those tech pieces that replicate Galactic Challenge modifiers. So you can get some really good ones. You can also get some gear. Really don't recommend to do this. But stuff like Fury Class Interceptor, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, those could be a little bit more enticing. Let's take a moment then and think about the actual battles themselves and stamina and how that all comes into play. 
So essentially, we went over it before, but every single battle will cost you 20 energy that will be refreshing over time. And each individual node is going to have a randomized unit out of a selection. There's always like a pool of characters that can randomly appear. It's either going to be on the challenge path, the standard path, randomized units, and they will have modifiers. This is similar to galactic challenges, but not always the same. So, for example, this Imperial Trooper node has got endless ranks. Not only that, they'll have this rather irritating over-prepared 1 modifier, which is going to be increasing their health, their protection, their offense and speed by 20 flipping percent. This is why it's so important to get good data disks, because it will help offset all of the increased difficulty that you get. Now, it's important to note, guys, that these battles, as you progress to later sectors, not only will the relic levels of the enemies increase, but also the modifiers that they have will grow in difficulty. They'll have additional, they'll go up to overprepared 4 and get 80% additional stats. The challenge path will exacerbate that even further. Now, boss nodes are also slightly different. You can click on a boss node. If you check out the modifiers there, they may have unique modifiers. Like this one will have an Omicron that's always active. It's got overprepared too. Perhaps certain nodes are also going to have particular win requirements. Like this B1 node over here, you need to win by using the Get Out of Here special granted ability. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth about that. But it's important to make sure that you do check those modifiers before you go into battle so you know what to expect. Every battle that you successfully complete will also drain the stamina on the units that you used in that battle. So what is meant by stamina then? There is one difference to this game mode compared to any other game mode. Each time we go into battle and we use some of our characters, they will drain stamina. You can see this additional bar here on Jabba. We know we use Jabba to do a battle to finish off Sector 2 boss node, right? Because we finished and won that battle, all of the units that were active during that fight lost 10% of their stamina, okay? How do, what does that mean exactly though? Like, when they get to zero, can we just no longer use them? Yes, that is absolutely true. Does it take time to recover stamina? Yes, it does. But not only do they regenerate it over time, and it takes a long time to actually recover any, uh, you can force the recovery through using consumables. Those stim packs, they're purchasable either through the shipment store, you can get them as rewards through the reward track, both on the premium and on the standard, and you can get them from wandering scavenger nodes, or like I said, the shipment store. Now, when you lose stamina, it's not just that once you hit 0%, you can no longer use that unit. As your stamina drops, it will lower your stats. Okay, you'll see my Jabba currently, he has a max theoretical health of 154,000, but he's lost 10% of his stats, so his health is actually 143,000. His speed has also dropped quite significantly. Okay, so you have to keep this in mind. Usually, there are a lot of teams that you can burn all the way down to like 1% stamina with the right data disk setup and the right enemy. However, many teams, especially if you don't have a lot of gear on them, will only be able to do battle at 100% stamina or 80% or 70%. So it's very important as part of Conquest to manage your stamina as you progress and try to not just use one team at a time. It does become very difficult, therefore, for rosters with smaller total GP, smaller accessible units to actually progress further because you need to do a lot of battles. Like I said, there are 22 battles per sector and that's without having to repeat any battles or farm any data cron nodes. Okay, we'll get to those in a moment. So you need to have a large roster and you need to be able to either use stim packs or manage the battles that you use effectively to hit global feats without burning through stamina and dropping battles and wasting energy. The final thing we'll touch on here is the optional bonus battles. You do not need to do these at all, ever, unless you really want to have datacrons, in which case you do. So, when you complete a sector, after you've got this data disk stockpile, you're able to proceed to the next one. Sector 1 has got three optional bonus battles, and the benefit of these is, one, you can farm feats on them, either sector feats or global feats. Two, you can also get rewards that are different. Sector 1 will give you a chance at earning a fresh datacron, and it'll always be for the most recent set. It'll also give you some additional data cache, which is great. But some of these additional bonus nodes will give you slightly different rewards. For example, 
This one over here gives you the Binding Mark 1, the level 1 materials that you need to farm Datacrons or apply upgrades to your Datacrons. The third one will give you Binding Mark 3 and Binding Mark 2. I don't recommend farming these nodes. They're not the best. They've just given people an option if they can't progress through Sector 1 or can't go past Sector 1 to still be able to get a level 9 Datacron by farming these three nodes. Okay, so as you go through the different sectors, you get better rewards from those bonus sector nodes. Okay, so Sector 2 has got two. This one over here, this first one, is going to give us uh, Mark 1s and it will also give you Data Cache, so currency to upgrade. Or the second node over here will give you Mark 2s and Mark 3s, okay? I did that the wrong way around, but never mind. So again, it's another means of you unlocking higher tiers. Typically speaking, the Sector 3 bonus node and the Sector 4 bonus node are the best ones to do because they give you Mark 1 and Mark 2 materials and Sector 4 gives you Mark 2 and Mark 3. So you can focus on where you need to farm those Datacron materials. And Sector 5 is the only place that will give you reroll materials, but only for Mark 1 and Mark 2. The only way to get roll, uh, Mark 3 reroll materials, so you can reroll 7, 8 stats and the level 9 ability, is through whaling for money or through territory wars, by winning or losing, depending on your GP. To round it all out, really, when we look at this at the very high level, when it comes to conquest, you want to achieve a couple of things. That is, you want to hit red box, you want to hit it as quickly and efficiently as possible, and you want to be farming as many Datacrons as you possibly can. We achieve this by refreshing our energy as many times as possible that we can afford realistically during the path of conquest, during the whole event. You want to be able to make sure that you are hitting the feats as efficiently as possible, which means plotting out all of the feats, all of the requirements and one tapping everything and trying not to drop any stars on the nodes as you progress. If you are able to do that, you can easily red box conquest provided you have the tools within your roster to do so you can red box conquest in really good time and farm a whole boatload of datacrons that is it in a nutshell at the very minimum do three refreshes of crystals each day to get through conquest as fast as possible and start farming those datacrons to give you an idea of what you can expect if you do six energy refreshes every single day in conquest i'll just show you the datacrons that i've managed to accumulate and of course did manage to get all of the conquest units unlocked in no time so for this current set, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 level 9s, as well as 3 level 8s, okay? And you can do this just by having the pass and refreshing 6 energy per day, okay? 6 times per day I've got this. If you do the 50s, you can expect to probably get about half, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more than half. Get, getting this amount of data discs, data crons rather, gives you a really, really strong advantage in PvP game modes, which is one of the reasons why I really do like Conquest overall. It's one of the best rewarding game modes in the game. It just requires time and effort. Thankfully, I do go to the trouble of making guides for all the sectors. This version of Conquest is already figured out and it's very easy. I've got a whole playlist teaching you how to get your red box. Go check it out right here. But before you do, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you all in the very next video. Peace out and may the force be with you.